Welcome. Thank you for joining us for a Q&A with the directors of My Wild Heart. My name is Laura Thielen. I'm one of the programmers for the Ashland Independent Film Festival, and it's a pleasure to welcome you to this special session with the filmmakers. Um, if you have questions that you'd like to post to them, I'd like to encourage you to go to the festival's Facebook page, and in the comment section, you can ask your questions, and Lily and Erin will be answering them um, probably tomorrow. So post them today. Uh, also, I do want to encourage you to uh, be sure to rate the film since you've just seen it. And now, without further ado, it is my pleasure to welcome producer and co-director Lily Vakili and her colleague Erin Harper, who is a co-director and editor. And as I understand it, you both did camera work as well, according to the credits. Is that correct? Well, the vast majority on Aaron's part. <laughs> okay, that's and two other. We had we had a lot of um, camera people. We had two. I would say, sort of, we had a main DP and another uh, second camera who did a lot, and then I filled in as like a second camera for like interviews and stuff. So, and then well, it was highly I, collaborative. Yeah. <laughs> highly collaborative, and I wanted to uh, congratulate you both on a really lovely portrait. Um, of a of a man, and you cover so much material in such a small space of time. Really, I mean, it, we we could have spent a lot more time with Nadir. So I'd like to start with um, Lily. Nadir is your father, so I'm wondering if you could talk about how the project came about, and then maybe we'll move into how the collaboration between Aaron, how you came aboard and how your collaboration developed. Sure, and um, and uh, my father is Nader, Nader Vakili, and uh, how the project came about, um, I, I suspect that it's been, it has been knocking about my mind probably, you know, since I was a small child observing him carve, you know, on the carport and sitting there watching the sawdust come off and, uh, you know, listening to my mother talk about his work. And uh, so I suspect it's been going on a long time before the concrete idea of a film came to my mind. Uh, I think, especially as time passes and I kind of look back and wondering what was the primary impetus. Um, and I've talked to Erin about this. Um, as my mother's memory faded um, due to Alzheimer's, as she became more removed from us and from my father and the world, um, that core, that solid, um, driver for the family was becoming untethered, I guess. And she had been really the one who framed my father's artwork in the context of gallery showings in terms of um, sometimes the, the naming of the statues, as you'll, you'll see in the film. Um, and as she became more removed from us, I felt, I think I wanted to hold on to my family and my mother and the critical importance that my father's artwork played in our lives. And so maybe in a sense, I was trying to act as a, a very poor <laughs> substitute for my mother's documentation of my father's work and how she present helped him present it to the world and how they interacted around the artwork you know to me that was love and that was my family so you know truth be told i'm probably holding on to my mother and holding on to the beauty of of a family at a certain point in time well, it's a beautiful testament to love and to family, truly. Mm -hmm. um, and how did you, Erin, how did you come to the project? How, how did that work? Yeah, 
Um, well, through, you know, friend of a friend, which is how everything sort of happens, right, for the, you know, the logistical part. Um, so the, the Dennis Connor, who, who was doing the photography at the time, mm -hmm. um, is a, another filmmaking colleague of mine. And he was, I think they made a short film first that I saw. And right. then I saw that. And then he, you know, said, I think this wants to grow into something bigger. And would you be willing to handle it? And so I just started with asking Lily to just give me all the footage. And I just was, I said, I just need to watch everything, you mm -hmm. know, and we go from there. Like I don't, especially as an editor, but also I, I, at that time I thought I was just editing. I wasn't planning on directing. And I said, as an editor, I have to watch every single minute. I just have to, and I have to have first impressions and I just, I, you know, and I'll know. And yeah, I, it was really interesting. I mean, he's extraordinary and what he does is really extraordinary and multifaceted but then when i saw the footage with mary jane which i still get choked up i was like holy moly this is a love story and it just has so many layers of beauty and art and just the riches that we all need especially now <laughs> and yeah i just thought you know, this is, this is a, this is a deep relationship and there are so many layers and threads and access, uh, complete access, which is a documentary for filmmaker. It's the most important thing. And I felt like he was an open book. I could tell. Mm. And there was also a lot that still needed to be shot at that point. When I was seeing the footage, mm -hmm. I said, there's, there's a lot more that we need to go get but it was exciting for me because then I could see, I was given a lot of material that was rich, but then I was excited by helping to build the story and get what I needed to get from an editor's mm -hmm. perspective. Like I knew what we needed to get and I just had a very deep sense that it was there and that Nodder would offer it. And so that's when I kind of, when I went on that shoot, it, I just sort of fell into the directing role, almost just sort of an accident. It was just kind of a thing that organically happened. And um, yeah, it, so, but I would say it was the love story and the connection between Nader and Mary Jane that hooked me. And then finding how you can, through sculpture, science, art, grieving, loss, where you, Nader is always finding the, the good part, the beauty of everything, no matter whether it's creating something wonderful and being joyous or being at the lowest of your low. And I was attracted to that for sure. Um, I wanted to actually ask you if I, I may have a follow-up question. Um, you, you mentioned that you felt that there was something else that you wanted to see. Can you pinpoint for us what that, what was that what wasn't there that you knew that he you you felt that he could give that wasn't hadn't hadn't been shot yet well being a narr i'm also a, a fiction writer so i'm very when i approach documentary i approach it the same way as i do fiction is this narrative thing even though i love nonlinear and all sorts of crazy structure stuff but i'm looking for this narrative the story and that i thought was missing was you know how you can biopics can very easily fall toward this little puff piece mm. and i was just like this this is heavy there's something heavy but he's not telling me what it is and there is conflict and there is something i mean obviously the pain of alzheimer's and seeing his wife fade away is, is kind of an obvious but i'm like it's there's something more there's something in his entire life's history and background that is making him do these sculptures from such an early what is doing, what is it? And I wanna hear it from him. He has to say what it is, or he has to address that. And so interestingly enough, I'll just give like, without giving anything away, well, I guess everybody's listening to this. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting because I did these interviews and <clears throat> with him and Lily would sometimes be there, but then she kind of just went away and was writing songs on a guitar in the house. <laughs> and she just sort of disappeared. And I really appreciated that because when that happened, Nader really opened up in a way I don't think that he would have with Lily because Lily had uh, had operated all or had um, driven all of the interviews before that. So all the footage I was seeing, she was interviewing him. 
And that's, you know, that's a tough reality. I think sometimes as a family member or someone very close to the topic, I, I definitely felt like I hit a roadblock and was so grateful when I saw Erin's approach and her interest in her engagement. And she's absolutely right. I very intentionally chose to absent myself, which, you know, it was a little hard <laughs> to do, but it was also clear to me that, yeah, you know, that she was right, that there, there was something more and that it was hard for me in a sense as the youngest daughter, <laughs> the baby girl, you know, um, my dad's bubble to access. So it was a, I, I love the collaboration in yeah. for many reasons, but for that reason in particular. Yeah. I, I think I, I'd like, it looks like that, it seems like the collaboration, um, you got, you were able to receive different gifts from him mm. so that you get this really um, nuanced portrait. And there's, there's moments where there's, there's one, I can't remember what he's talking about, but I think it has to do with his early life in Iran. And you can see a trace of a tear on his face. And I just, I really appreciated that there was that emotion there, but it wasn't really emotional. It was like, and that there was, because there's this really, um, this, this depiction of an artist who really is able to channel so many emotions um, into his work. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask both of you, um, like, I, Lily, I know that you, music is a big part of your life and theater performance and of uh, that, Erin, you have a background in experimental and hybrid documentary forms. And I thought it was very interesting how layered the film is in terms of there's like music and poetry and sculpture and family stories and biography and I'm just, if you could, I'm just curious how your respective backgrounds really informed your approach to shaping the material to, and, or the story. Erin? Um, wow, it was such a ride. You know, <laughs> it was. <laughs> so, many, so many, I edited in sequences and then the, the end sequence is my favorite because that's more me and it's I mean this editing style and the layering of voices and disconnected voices with um like yeah. non-conjunctive like spatial <laughs> connections and stuff and um I, I was formerly a professional dancer so I feel like when I edit I choreograph but I feel like that's probably my most informed um that go went into doing experimental but anyway I think that Really, Nader was my inspiration. I would have these editing moments and everything comes to me about three and I could edit all day and then in three in the morning, I'd be like light bulb. And it was always like these voices of Nader coming into my head and just watching him and the way I observed him sculpting all the time. Mm -hmm. And it was just like the way that he approached a sculpture, I was like, the form of the film needs to be like his form. Mm -hmm. I need to match his form of sculpting and the way he is in nature. How does Nader look at something in nature? How does he listen? How does he stop and be quiet for how long? I mean, I just was by his side for days, just observing him. And then he'd go into the shop. And then how did that translate into the wood and the tools and what, was, what he was singing? Mm -hmm. So I was trying to just channel that and just find layers of just this kind of like, almost like a state of being in a state of nodder and um just and, and you know it was hard because a lot of the footage when i got at the beginning was so many talking heads i'm like oh gosh talking <laughs> heads what am i gonna do with all these talking heads i mean it was incredible stories and great information but it was just like i needed to be with nodder and nature and he just sort of he he led the way and also the discovery of like what scenes connected in what ways and what layers was absolutely I felt like I was dealing with hardwood I was like oh my gosh it's like 
you get to this one and there's a knot and you have to go around that knot. And then you're like, oh, this is like this much that we can go into. And then we have to sand for this many days here. And I literally felt like that when I was editing and I would write to e Nader, I'd say, Nader, I think, I think I finally get what you were teaching me all along. <laughs> like I really understand. And I do feel like Nader is so smart. I feel like he knew, like when you said he gave a gift to each of us in a different way with a collaboration, I feel like he, he met me and he cooked for me and we ate together and we lived together for a while when we were all of us in the same house, the DP and Lily and me. And I feel like he was getting to know each of us in our own way. And he knew what he needed to deliver to each of us. Oh, that's, that's lovely. He's very Persian. Yeah. You know, so, so he's very Persian and you, you serve the guest and, yes, and my father, cooked all this Persian oh, yeah. meals, you know, for Aaron and for Adam. And um, it was, uh, it was a delight for him. And I think, you know, it, it gave him an outlet as well to express himself to someone outside the family, he which was wonderful, times, you know. Sorry, he told me a couple of times, he said, especially around the Vietnam War, which was, I was just, I, I could do like a short film on that alone um but he said i there are a few times he's like i've never he was su he surprised himself he said i've never told anyone that before like i've never i've never said that and and i could feel it like my deep adam next to me i was here and there's not her and there were these moments where i could tell there was a, a, a first time discovery and we all just were like oh, like we held it we could, you could feel when those moments were happening. Like you, it's like, you know exactly what's going in the movie the second it happens. You go and you find those places because you'll know when it happens in real time, you know that's in the movie. And then everything else you're gonna have to like dig through and Brown. eliminate. The music was um, really critical in my mind. And it's yes. interesting because one of, one of my missions when I started working on it is I, I um, I wanted to use music uh, that was reflective of the many places that we lived, but also, you know, in particular, Persian, Iranian music. And um, I sought out uh, Nagme Faramand, who is this amazing musician. She is an expert on the tombak, and she, uh, I, I didn't know her. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just found through, you know, online different ways, reaching out to her, sending her messages and would she consider and da, 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 da. And uh, she eventually got back to me and um, agreed to let us use her music, which we used in that initial trailer, in that first trailer that Aaron saw. And then from there, you know, we had the most um, fantastic person, Zach Brock, uh, working on uh, composing the music for the film as a whole. And he seemed to just absorb that sense of that the music needed to be both background, but also move the story. You know, the thematic approach to the pieces that he wrote about my mother, um, yeah. about travel, about loss. Um, was that was another voice in the film. And that's one of the things between Nagme's work and Zach's incredible compositions. That was this additional voice that I hope the audience felt a, a tie to. And, and I think it's, and maybe because it's your, your, your father is such a polyphonic, voice himself. I mean, he's a scientist, he's a father, he's a husband, he's an artist, he's a poet, he appreciates nature that, 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 that there's so many layers um, that are revealed um, in just beautiful ways. So I, I, I really appreciated how the two of you um, sort of mimic and evoke that quality to, to, because he really comes through or the first time I saw the film I just remember like I just felt him so much so I wanted to congratulate you both on um, creating such a feeling portrait. Um, I wanted to ask 
A couple questions about, well, Lily, let's start with you. I mean, making a film about one's family, uh, one's father, um, how did you get your father to, was it an easy thing to get him to agree? Um, and did you have any sort of, what kind of agreements did you have in terms of this will be covered, this won't, we're going to focus on this, we're not going to focus on that. I'm just curious how that family dynamic went down. Well, you know, um, my father, when I, I had, I dreamt that I made this film. Mm. Um, I guess it was eight years ago or so. I, I woke up middle of the night, the, the usual three in the morning that Aaron mentioned. And I had made the film. It was done. Hmm. And, uh, and the next day I, I spoke to my dad and I said, daddy, it's just the strangest thing. I, I've made this film about, about you and the statues and mommy. It was just this whole, you know, and I said, I, th I think I have to do this. I have to do it. You know, I mean, <laughs> I don't know where, where I got the, you know, the gumption. Um, I know where I got the gumption actually, but, um, <laughs> and he said, you have my permission to do mm -hmm. as you wish. Those are the important words to do as you wish. And what was instructive to me about that and which ultimately, you know, led to Aaron's involvement that I'm so grateful for is I think that I put more limitations on certain things than any of my family members did. There was, there was a conversation around to what extent we would um, want to film my mother and have her participate. And I think anyone in a similar circumstance with a loved one who is, um, requires care and uh, cannot act for themselves, you have to really weigh the value, the, the dignity of the person and how you're going to do that thing. How are you going to do it? Um, and that was a tough one. Mm -hmm. And, um, but my, my siblings were remarkably open, which is amazing to say that I, I love them all dearly. We're a pretty vocal, um, at times rather contentious family. So I was so grateful. They were just so generous. And I, I think so much of it came from this, grieving for our mother and uh, how to us the statues represented her as much as my father well i know you're in effect you're the youngest in the family of six um the art is also a member of your family <laughs> you know Aaron loved that Aaron was like oh my gosh Remember the pictures we showed that we found that one picture with my sisters holding, hiding behind the swan and Aaron was like, Oh my God, we have to use that. <laughs> and it's just, it's, uh, and, and just how you and your siblings um, talk with such, so genuine. I, I, I loved when your brothers talked about the chore of sanding. <laughs> and the varnishing and it just like it's like saturday chores and that is like i but i but there just is such a an acceptance and a and a wonder of your father's pursuit of his artistic muse um and that your mother was in many respects that muse and and that how she um supported his ability i just i had pictures of you moving with all that wood it's like it's like insane all that wood. Um, I was curious. Uh, it, we sort of touched up about this uh, a little bit, but I wanted to to ask you: um, Did the interview did the interviews go where you 
Were there surprise? You've alluded to this, but I'm wondering if you can be specific about interviews that went in surprising directions for you that really created such depth for the film. It's a question for either of you. Well, I can point to one specific, which I wanted to put it in the film, wanted to put it in the film, wanted to put it in the film. For some reason, it was not in any of the cuts because we had an, a shortcut that was not a good length for festivals. So we lengthened this and that's when it got in. And it was the moment when he was talking about uh, mahogany, which kind of wood, Willie? The Honduran mahogany. The Honduran mahogany, giganto behemoth log that's sitting in his workshop. And he's like, that one is, that is my last one that is for her. And he just, and he just started describing it. And he started reciting Rumi and then it went into song and he just started singing and he just, he just went inside. Mm. I was just like, ah. and um, yeah, it was just one of those magical moments that you just happened to be there for, you know? And it was just, it came out of just him dropping in, just dropping in right before our eyes. And that's why he's so generous. He's so unselfconscious and just so giving. So that was, yeah. that was it for me, you know? I think, you know, from the standpoint of a sibling interviewing her siblings, and then my eldest sister interviewed me, um, it was, you know, it was very intimate. I mean, uh, you know, of course, the cinematographer at the time, Dennis Connors was there, and sound guy Bruce Hansen was there. But it, was, it felt very intimate. It felt very much like we were talking to each other. And um, for us, as close as we are, we aren't always the most, there are many things we don't talk about. I think many families understand that. <laughs> you may love each other so intensely and support each other and all these things, and, but there are many things that you don't talk about. In some ways, because you have to hold on, you have to keep it together. And um, these interviews, I heard things from my siblings, you know, all of them except for my younger brother, obviously older than me. So they had seen different things. They knew different things about my parents. They remembered different things. You know, it was a little Rashomon-like <laughs> at various <laughs> points. And I think we were all kind of a little destabilized by it, frankly. There was a lot that didn't go in the film, as Aaron oh, I, I can imagine. Um, I wanted to, oh, just quickly, over what period of time did you do the shooting? Like, how, was it uh, one year, two years of interviews? Years. Six years. Six. Six years of interviews, wow, okay. Well, and, I mean, like, the, the whole yeah. time period, but, but between the time when I started by the t and then the t by the time the last year when Aaron came on board, which was, <clears throat> you know, there were four shoots, I guess, total, um, five shoots, and then a lot of B footage, you know, just going around B roll, and capturing things. And I wanted to ask if it's, um, and I hope this is okay to ask, I'm just curious how your mother is and how your father is. Uh, well, um, my mother, um, my mother died, um, uh, a year ago. I'm sorry. June 29th. Um, so my father is doing remarkably well, um, <laughs> after us being very, very worried <laughs> for quite a few months. Um, he's still making the world more beautiful for my mother, I think. That's, well, I, I have to say the final, I, if you would call it the third act of the film, is such a beautiful, elegiac, love story um that really is 
I, I love that that's where we go. There's, it's alluded to throughout the entire film, but it sort of switches from this, his story and his life to their life and his profound love for her and how he continues to, and, and how, so, how his grieving and, but also his wanting, the, the, the scene with the bridge um, and how he continues to want to make things and keep that spirit alive is, is really very lovely. I, I want to congratulate you both. Thank you. On a very touching, um, in, jo complicatedly joyful <laughs> film because <laughs> your, your subject is really, um, I, I, has he said, my last question, has he seen the film and what did he think of it? Mm. He has seen the film, um, and uh, hey, room. Hi, yi, yi. <laughs> I think at, he did say at a so he's he's seen it several times, <clears throat> and um, I think he was doing it as a favor to me, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 he was very very joyous of Aaron's work and felt very close to Erin and, and really appreciated her artistry being brought into this project. Now he's an artist and he recognized her passion. So I think he wanted to see Erin's work <laughs> too, you know? Uh, he has said that he doesn't think he needs to see it again. And I understand that. Yeah. I think I was with him the first time he saw the film. It was at Lily's house and he mm -hmm. thought it was really interesting. Afterwards, he came up to me and I loved that it wasn't about like, oh, the film was wonderful or it was, he didn't make a comment about the film. He just kept talking about Mary Jane. <laughs> he just was like, Aaron. And, and there were more stories pouring out of him. Like it just triggered something in him. And I was like, oh, yes. It was kind of, for me, the perfect response. I loved it. Well, I want to thank you both so much for joining us. And the, the film that you've made is really about the spirit of creativity and how we pour our hearts into creative um, pursuits and how deeply satisfying and grounding that is. And I just wish, I, I know these are challenging times, and I just wish that that spirit of creativity, we look forward to seeing what you do next. Thank, Thank you so much for being with us. Thank, Thank you very much for having yeah. us. We're thrilled to be here. Thanks.